Hi everyone, it's Carrie TV, and today's topic, one of my personal faves, how to win. So stay tuned. This is Carrie White in sunny, beautiful Los Angeles, your local go-to knowledge broker here from the, well, we're not in the knowledge office today. We're in one of my beautiful Brentwood condos that's just been staged, and I just had to come highlight this today. Uh, we'll be on the market soon, but by the time this comes out, it will already be sold. So it's a hot market. So in this market, how do you actually win the bid on the home? How do you get the contract secured against all these other buyers, the cash buyers, people releasing their contingencies, all these obstacles? The market goes through its ups and downs, but right now we have been in this constant upward trajectory since 2011. I remember writing my first offer in 2011 in Playa del Rey on a house for 700,000. And there was a line of people out front, and this was a long time ago. The average price point now is 1.5 million there. So I am very used to this multiple offer market in the last 10 years or so. So in Los Angeles, in any market, it doesn't have to be the hottest market, there can be mul multiple offers on any great deal or any situation. So never be scared when there's multiple offers. In a lot of ways, you want there to be more than one offer on a property or else what's wrong with it? Why doesn't anybody else want it, right? Unique properties are always highly sought after. Here on the Carry White team, we are well-versed in multiple offers, winning them, or putting our clients in the position where they can actually be the winning bid. There's two parts about that, because sometimes we can get them the price that they need, but maybe they don't necessarily want to come up on that price. So here's the situation. Not every property with a multiple offer is the same. There's really no rules to how this works. There's some standards and some norms, but it's really the wild, wild west. And I say that often because it's just so true. So my number one rule on this is never to be discouraged. Don't stress out because you're in a bidding war or there's competition or there's more offers on it than expected or things don't go to plan because that's just how, that's just the expectation you have to have right now. So you really have to check your emotions at the door, which is almost impossible to say when you're buying a home because it's a very emotional process. So there's a limited supply of unique properties. So you'll have to expect that the right property when it comes along will be of interest. So you need the right combination of the price you want to pay, the terms need to be right, a good agent, a great seller, and when all this happens in this magical way, it comes together and the property becomes yours. If the property doesn't work out for some reason, trust that this is just not your home. I believe in good energy and I believe that the right home ends up with the right person. So rest assured, don't be discouraged and get your butt out there and get offering on some homes. All right, so the second point is expect no rules. A seller has the option to dictate the price that they list their home and the offer process and every situation is so wildly different. There's really no rules or expectations from CAR, California Association of Realtors, or our multiple listing service, they don't tell you how to run your listing. You can list at whatever price you want, you can take an offer whenever you want. So there's the norms, as I mentioned, but have no expectations for how it can work. But here's some insights on what we expect. The seller can put their property on the market and take the first offer that comes in or they can collect offers over a period of time and decide when they want to respond, if they're going to stand on a multiple counter or if they're just going to respond to one offer. The seller has the ultimate choice in how they want to do that. Sometimes buyers come in and they say, hey, here's my offer, get back to me by tomorrow at five. Sellers don't often get back to them by tomorrow at five and uh, they don't, they're not too happy about that, but you know, it's the market. It's also people that write a low ball and they go, wink, wink, work your magic, get me that deal. But in a multiple offer situation, you'll have to know that the sellers are in the driver's seat and no expectations here. So with the offers, the sellers can set a multiple deadline for that counter offer, but keep in mind, they can also take another offer before that counter deadline comes up. So if they send out the best and final on a Thursday and they say, hey, they're all due back Saturday, it's possible that they accepted an offer that Friday. Hugely frustrating. My biggest lesson I can give you on this situation is go in big. You never know what you're working with or where the seller's motivation is. So go big, don't leave anything on the table because you do not know if you're going to get a counter offer, when they're going to take an offer, because like I said, there's no expectations and no rules. 
the most common is they do set their best and final. Everyone sends in their best and final, which means their best price, their best terms, shortest contingencies, highest price. The seller chooses one and they accept that one. So there's not usually another round. It's usually just the three, the offers, the counter offers, and then they choose one. So that's the most normal situation we see, but again, wild, wild west out there. So we've got the taking an offer quickly, the offer deadline, the multiple offers. Then there's also the no man's land, as I call it, where the listing agent is completely out of the picture. They're MIA, they're not around. So you really don't have an idea of what you need to write. There's no agent to agent relationship. So really it's like a silent auction, the silent auction method, as I call it. You have to go in with your best offer and just hope that it's accepted and the kind of rule of thumb is what's the number that if we call and say hey it's sold for x that you won't lose sleep that night that's really where you need to go on these properties when there are multiple offers and it's a tough market to get your offer accepted why having a good agent in a multiple offer market is key well when you get into escrow this is like a little mini marriage you've got your clients the other agent escrow vendors and everyone is in constant communication 24 7. So you want to work with an agent that you know, like, and trust because there's so many moving parts or so many things going on that you want to make sure they know what's going on. They're on top of it. And basically that they're making sure everybody else in the transaction is on top of it. Also keep in mind, a local well reputed agent is more likely to have the inside scoop on a deal with these other agents because they've worked together before. They know each other. Regardless of the situation, our goal is to always build the best rapport with the other agent and all agents throughout our community so that we can be the number one position to get our clients offer accepted, right? It's much better to be on good terms with all the agents in the community than not for more reasons than one. But there's agents out there that will call you as a listing agent, nonstop, super aggressive, rude, pushy. And when you call and tell them that their offer wasn't accepted, they literally cuss you out. Do you think anyone is going to want to take an offer from that person ever? No. So keep in mind, having a good agent that's well-respected and knows agents in the community is really, really important. Sometimes working with an out of area agent in multiple offer situation is not the best idea. So we've had success time and time again due to our experience and our connections in Los Angeles with multiple offers. I think almost every single property we write on, we do about 30 to 40 transactions a year, about 60 to 70% of them are buyers. It's becoming a little more even, but I'm telling you all of these are multiple offer situations. So we know the ins and outs and how to get this done. The last piece is how you structure your offer. But this video is a little long, so I'm gonna get into that in a different video where we talk about how to make your offer as competitive as possible. So not only do you have all these items I've just mentioned about how you negotiate, the counter offer, the connections, the people involved, but let's talk about the actual transaction, the actual paperwork and how to really set yourself apart. So thanks for watching today for the inside scoop on Carry TV, but make sure Watch next week for part two of this.